Hello and welcome to this section of the TI-84 Tutor and in this section we're going to work with probability or begin to work with probability. And so in this section specifically we're going to talk about permutations, combinations, factorial, and we're even going to talk about random numbers. And so the thing that you need to keep in mind is that most of the probability functions are in the math menu and there's a menu over here called probability. So let's go look at that. And then here you have several things that are going to be useful. The first one is generating a random number. A lot of times you're dealing with statistical things or things in probability and you want to generate a quick random number. So you can hit number one and random number is going to, you know, the little expression is going to pop up there. You hit enter and out is going to spit a random number between zero and one. In probability, um, all of your probabilities are going to be between 0 and 1, so it's useful to be able to generate random numbers. Maybe you're doing a little experiment in your calculator, who knows, but if you ever need a random number generator, there it is. Now once you put it up there, you can continue generating random numbers by continuing to hit enter. Notice I'm not putting the command there anymore, but the calculator is smart enough to know that if I generate one random number, I'm probably going to want to generate a few more. So if you keep hitting enter, you keep getting random numbers. Now if you go back into the math menu and back to probability, look down, let's skip around number five, random integer. So let's go to number five and here for a random integer, it's exactly what it sounds like. I'm going to get a random integer out, but you need to specify a boundary. Maybe I want random integer between zero and 10. So I need to put two numbers in there separated by a con, con, uh, comma. And whenever I do that, here's a random number. There's one. I can hit it again. There's zero, six, nine. So it's generating random numbers between zero and 10 inclusive. If I go back in the math menu and I go back to probability and I go back to random integer number five, I can put anything I want in here between two and 77. And then it's only going to generate random numbers between those two numbers. So there's 22, there's 11, there's five, you see the point here. So you can generate, put any numbers that you want in here. Now, if we also go back into the math menu and go into the probability menu, we're going to see our nice friendly factorial. I kind of wish they would have put a button on the calculator, a dedicated button for this, but I guess I see why they didn't do it as well. But if you ever need to do a factorial of a number, uh, let's say uh, four factorial, put your four up there and then go in the math menu. You have to go to probability and hit number four to put that exclamation point there. That's four factorial. You hit enter and you'll get a number of 24. So don't forget that factorial just means, so in this case, four times three times two times one. So four times three is 12 and 12 times two is 24. And that's why we get that. So, you know, a larger number is much more difficult to do in your head. So 255 factorial number four, it would equal a very large number. In fact, it's so large, it's too big for the calculator to display. So you can quickly get up to the point where it's not going to work. But I can pull up the last entry, and I can go back here. Maybe I'll delete a decimal, and I'll make it 25 factorial. And that it can sort of do. 1.5 times 10 to the 25. Very, very large number, because this is basically 25 times 24 times 23 times 22 times 21, you know, all the way down to 1. So that's a huge number. Okay, now two other very important functions in this calculator and probability that you'll use all the time is number two and number three, which is permutation and combination. You can calculate both of them by hand. There are formulas that you can do to calculate it by hand, but having a calculator is all about saving a little bit of time. So if you know how to use these, it's going to save you time. In order to use either one of these things, you need to um, put a number in for n, and a number in for R. So here's the total amount of items you have, and this number is how many you are pulling out of that bag at one time. And if this these concepts don't seem very clear to you, then it's probably a good idea for you to go take a look at my uh, probability and statistics tutor where we talk about permutations and combinations in, you know, in great detail and all the different examples of why you would use them. But if you ever did need to use them, the way you do it is, is this. You get out of here, uh, let's say you wanted to do a permutation of five uh, things taken two at a time. So you would put five things first, then you would go to the probability menu, and then you would hit number two. And that's going to put NPR up there, and then 
two you have to put there because we're taking two at a time. So we have five items in a bag and we're taking two at a time out of this bag. And then whenever we hit enter, the, the calculator has told us that there are 20 different permutations for that to happen. And don't forget, permutations are when you pull random objects out, for instance, and the order does matter. So if you're pulling a yellow sock and a red sock out, it does matter if you pulled a yellow and then a red, or if in a different experiment you pulled a red and then a yellow. It's the same two socks that you pulled out but the order in which you pulled them out matters and so that's the number of permutations that you can pull two items out of a bag of five objects. Um, now if you wanted to calculate the number of combinations you would put five and then you would go into the math menu to probability and then do number three and they would take them two at a time let's say. So here's the number of combinations of five things taken two at a time. If you hit that, you'll get a number of 10. And so in this case, it's the same experiment. Five items in a bag, you take two of them out at one time. It's just that in this case, for combinations, the order does not matter. So if I pull a red sock and a yellow sock out of the bag, um, it doesn't matter which one comes first. You know, red followed by yellow is the same thing as yellow followed by red. It's counted the same. So because there's no matter in what order in which you pull them out, of course the combinations, for the same numbers, the combination is going to, to have less number of, of ways in which that can happen. Because when the order does matter, of course there's a whole lot of different ways in which you can pull those, those socks out of a bag, for instance. Um, so those are the basic ideas of, of using uh, these functions in the calculator. Just remember, if you want to generate a random number, that's here uh, between 0 and 1. If you want to generate a random integer, then you need to put two numbers separated by a comma, and then it's going to generate a random integer between those two points. Factorial is here. You just stick the exclamation point after your number. And then permutations and combinations are also in here, but it's important. The main thing people get confused about is that in order to use permutations and combinations you have to stick the first number on first then go to the probability menu then hit you know your NPR or NCR and then hit your other number and then evaluate the expression a lot of people try to do it where they go put this up first and they have problems so remember first number then function then second number it should really match the labeling here and you'll be in really good shape